How about some quick hits instead? Let's go, Gab. It was always going to be a contrast in styles when Spurs took on Leeds United. Jules, was it just a case of Mourinho's smarts and that old cliche <laughs> about Bielsa's naivete? There was a bit of that. There was also a lot of mistakes made quite early by uh, quite inexperienced uh, Leeds defence. You saw Ilan Melier, who I love dearly, uh, who is French. But you just can't can't do that against a team like that. You're gonna get punished. If you are Yoski, you can't foul like this in the box. Whether you want to have a discussion or whether a penalty, whether outside the box, inside on the line, the line by the way is the box anyway. It's just yeah. It looked at times he was really yeah. men against boys, and I think maybe the 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 score is a bit harsh on Leeds, but that's the reality. Spurs though. executed well. Yeah, just just exactly. just don't. Just the they, they also had. You know, they're not going to outwork. I think that's a big thing, work rate. They had two extra days rest. I don't go and crush Bielsa and call no, him naive, on, man. This is this is the way he plays and he's built a career. Exactly. Arsenal beat West Brom 4-0 in the uh, driving snow. Three wins in three now for Mikel Arteta and the Champions League is just six points away. You see? I go back to this. You see this, Tierney. You see Saka. You see Emil Smith-Rowe. I actually counted them up, right? Arsenal's big ticket items, I love, I'm monothematic, keep going back to this, right? This three wins in three, yeah. David Luiz, not there. Yeah. Willian played 20 minutes in yeah. those three games. Pepe played 20 minutes in those three games. Thomas Partey, not there. Gabriel, got no problem with him, but not there. Uh, Alba played, started two of those games, didn't play particularly well. No. You know what? Maybe if you believe a little more in those, maybe if you, if you, if you'd put, your little, if you put your little nuts away for the winter, and then you made some big signings that make a difference later. A little more faith in that. Yeah, maybe. Could work. Huh? My boy Laka is amazing. You're amazing. You, and you get the it. best of Lacazette. You know there you go. You know it. Well, yeah. we should also mention William Saliba. Yes. Because going on the, to Nice. Wait, uh, was he ever at Arsenal? Oh, yeah. He oh, was, yeah. yeah. He was. He was I, it was a frustrating plan. time. Now he's going to play a lot. Uh, and he'll be able to show that he's, he's a very, very good, very promising young defender. And hopefully he can go back to Arsenal and... Finally playing. He's fit, yeah? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Real Madrid have 41% possession at home and beat Celta de Vigo 2-0. Uh, Jules, I guess this is the new normal right now for Zidane. Keep it tight, risk very little, and grind your way forward. We wanted a, a response. We said a reaction after the after the disappointing draw against against Elche, and, and I think we, we got it. This time they were more focused after the break. And like in previous games, they even scored quite early in the second half, like they did in the first half too. Asensio and Vasquez were good. Benzema was good. He was more solid, even without Sergio Ramos. It's, it's positive to keep a clean sheet against a team like Vigo, who, who's done really well. And they have the mighty Yago Aspas and yes, Chacho and Pudet. And everybody. And Pudet yeah, since Pudet came in, it's a different team. Yeah. The thing is, you, you, take can't, it. You, you can't play like this all season long. I'm going to give him no, the benefit of the doubt that... I don't you know, think they had to play differently to win that game. And no, that's I know, wanted, but so. I want to see them play the way a big team plays yeah. at some point. But they right? can do that. And I'm I sure think they maybe they, maybe he feels he needs a fit Eden Hazard to do that. I don't know. But you're not going to go all season with this. Ronald Koeman leaves out my boy Antoine Griezmann again. And Barca look really good for a while, really. I mean, that's your question. But they only <laughs> managed one goal against bottom of the table, Resca. They did look really good. They created a lot of chances. They didn't take those chances. Um, and then it gets nervy at yeah. the end because they were just 1-0 up. Yeah. It's Koeman. He's got players out. Did, did you like that, bringing on Mingesa right back at the yeah. end? <laughs> I was <laughs> like, what's going on? I was shouting the television. I'm like, oh, my God. But look, I, I got to be fair. I worry when teams don't create chances. They created chances in, the, yeah. in this day. I know okay. Westgar bottom of the table, but they created chances. That's what matters. No Benacer, no Ibra, no Theo Hernandez, but Rafael Leal scores a great goal and Milan stay top, heading into their crunch game with Juventus. Uh, Jules, it's 29 matches unbeaten now. You're right, and they were down to 10 men as well, and they still... Tonali you know, sent off. Yeah, Tonali sent off early on. They play an hour with 10 men. I thought they were still, they were still good and, 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 and solid. And you're right, Rafael Leal with a lovely goal. I mean, there was some cracking goals this weekend in, in, in Serie A. Zakani, wow. Wow, and Zielinski as well. But yeah, really strong. I mean, we say the confidence, even if something happens that you didn't expect, like the red card so early, yeah. you're strong, you're confident. And that game on Wednesday will be very special, I think. Juventus, Juventus they won 4-1. Against Udinese, as Cristiano Ronaldo scores two and gives an assist as well. Gab, it's their worst start in years, but did you see a sign of protest? It feels like I've asked you that about progress. Maybe every two weeks in the start of the season. And sometimes we think there is, and then they go back to struggling. 
I'm going to be careful because I don't want to upset the Ronaldo fanboys because on the show last night, I didn't go on and on about him. Look, Ronaldo scoring two goals and providing one assist. He does that most weeks. That's not news. No, that's news, not news. Is, news is man bites dog, not dog bites man. Yeah. Okay? Cristiano Ronaldo is not a problem. He's not an issue at Juventus. No. He is purely an asset. What I think was interesting and what was important was Federico Chiesa scored. And I think Chiesa is a crucial part of Juventus' uh, future, given what they've invested on him. And by the way, Cristiano Ronaldo, since people love going back to this, 18 months from free agency, you know, he's not going to be here in five years' time, presumably. We yeah. assume, right? Chiesa, if everything goes to plan, will be. So yeah. that's what matters. But when you get the ball back so high up on the pitch, it's then easier to score goals and create chances. Like they Yeah, and look, and Ronaldo played without Morata, and I think he performs better when he's when he's with Morata, so all credit to Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah. But it's not just always about him. No, no. no um, right. And I think you know, Dybala got on the score sheet, which maybe makes a difference for him. It was garbage time goal, but whatever. Um, I think it's encouraging. I still don't see them dominating the midfield and having that quick passing, yeah. and that's what they need. Yeah. Manchester United beat Aston Villa on Friday, which feels like a lifetime ago, but since some portion of United fans seem more interested in Jadon Sancho than in actual, you know, football games. Um, let's talk about Borussia Dortmund CEO Hans-Jochen Watzke telling Kicker that Sancho was ready to move, mm -hmm. but that the deal didn't go through because United wouldn't meet the asking price and also insisted on paying in installments. What, is, it, is it charity? Did, did United think that Borussia Dortmund were charity, where it was like a, you know, like a boot sale? That you just go in and say, oh, you want the money straight in, 120 million. No, 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 we can only give you 80 and in four in four installments. That's just doesn't happen. If you want Sancho, you pay what you ask to pay. And then that's it. If you don't want him, then move on and I, go somewhere else. But I, I don't know why people are so fascinated with this story. They made a decision. Maybe United were hoping yeah. that Sancho would push more for a move. Maybe. Whatever. Uh, Enough. It didn't happen. Maybe he'll sign next year. Yeah, Maybe but it's, if you want a player, but you pay. You pay. That's the way it is. You try to negotiate. Yeah. If if you can't go your way, then you pay, or you just just leave it. I think it's a shame because they could they could do with him. But anyway, sticking with United, Edinson Cavani received a three-match ban for his me social media post. You thought, Gab? We but, talked about it a bit before when it happened, but we did. Now it's come out, and I thought United's statement was was interesting because they accept the fact that they had no choice. Yep. Based on the way the rules are, they had no choice but to give him a three-match ban, and they weren't going to contest it because the rules say you made a disparaging remark that brought the game into in, into uh, disrepute, mm. and it was aggravated because it made reference to ethnic origin or, or, or race. And that's it. There's no mitigating factors. What I would say here to this is it's a stupid law. It's a stupid, it's a badly written yeah. law. It doesn't, it doesn't do what it was intended to do. This was a case where somebody came out and me, a guy didn't know. He was yeah. using it towards a friend. He wasn't using it towards attacking anybody. He immediately took the post down. He didn't make excuses. He immediately apologized. And if you're going to go and treat this like somebody racially abusing somebody else, I think your law isn't doing what it was yeah. intended to do. Um, and now so, he has to go on a course. How, how patronizing is like that? You, you don't, he doesn't need a course. He knows what you know. Racism is just just tell him why it's different in this country compared to his country, and then he's fine. I would hope he's learned now. Erling Haaland returns for Borussia Dortmund, who beat Wolfsburg 2-0. Jules, this was nervier than it should have been, right? <laughs> he always is. You oh can change God. managers. It's always the same. You know, they were just 1-0 up, and they scored late with Jadon Sancho, by the way. First goal of the season, he would be happy with that. Nice little spin move yeah, on the target. spin move. He missed, he missed a chance in the first half, but I think this would be good. But yeah, that's the way I think the season goes for Dortmund. That's it. Bayern go two goals down against Mainz, who have only won one before this season. Eight games in a row where Bayern... Um, don't have the lead in a game, uh, but they're coming back and won 5-2. Do you see the glass half full or half empty? All right, I want to be clear on this. I want to put a little bit of time to this because the glass is most definitely half empty. You know, if you're one of those people who just looks at the highlights, oh, look, five goals, yeah, yeah. buy it, oh, look, oh, look, they're so mentally strong. Not only did they go 2-0 down, they could have been 3-0 down because yeah. mine's hit the post, right? Yeah. Um, Poor Hansi Flake, he had to go, he had to take Joshua Kimmich, his most important midfielder, get him to play right back because your boy, Benjamin Pavard, was, was getting so ripped bad. to shreds. Jerome Boateng, ripped to shreds. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, yeah, they come back because they have better players. They're playing Mainz. The only reason Mainz aren't bottom of the Bundesliga is because Schalke so and bad. Gelsenkirchen happens to be in Germany. <laughs> Mainz has won one game all season. They were beaten time and again by the counterattack, the ball on the, bo the ball over the top. Um, yeah, there's reason to be worried. There's reason but to be concerned. You know what? 
I, I, I just think for I know they lost to Hoffenheim four one and that was but they should lose to Mainz three 0 and maybe that will maybe that would be, be the wake up exactly. call that they need exactly. Now, how about some love for Leicester City? James Madison shines as they win two one in Newcastle. Jules, they're just one point off the top. Yeah, and this they, wasn't and this was against a team that likes to park the the Steve Bruce yeah, busmobile. I mean, I mean, they're bad. Newcastle are bad. I know at the end Carroll scored a good goal and then they pushed and. But they're bad. But, but Leicester were great. And I think Yuri Tillemans is so underrated, not spoken enough about because he's an incredible player. Uh, and seeing him at that level with NDD and Madison as well. And it's, it's really good. I just don't know if they can keep it up that way all season to really push and be there in the last few games. You know, it would, the, the Premier League would be won on, on much lower point total than last season and the, the, well, the last three seasons. So, of course, they have a chance. I'm, just not sure if they can go all the way. How much better is this team, do you think, than the 15-16 team? Oh, much better. They're a lot, a lot much more talented. better. Okay. A lot more just, talented. Just... But, you know, and so Yunshu came back, played the last yeah. 10 minutes, which is obviously very good for them too. Inter go behind a Crotone, have a storm back to win 6-2 with eight wins in a row. Lautaro scored a hat-trick and Lukaku looked great, although, you know, a little... Picked up a muscular yeah, injury. Muscular yeah, injury, which is not good. But God, Conte is grumpy again. I was going to say, is it because of Lukaku's injury or is it because no, I, Giroud was, hasn't arrived yet? No, I think or? he's grumpy because of Arturo Vidal. Now, you know, ah. we talked about how Arturo Vidal is Antonio Conte's what spirit animal. Um, I, I mean, the, the, this was, you want to talk about somebody who is so wound up, so on edge, you know, belongs in a straight jacket. He, <laughs> he gave up, he gives up a penalty, right? Yeah, yeah, right. After he won the ball in midfield and yeah. everything. Gives a penalty. Stonewall penalty. Right? Yeah, no argument. 100%. It keeps arguing and arguing. Like he always you can, does. You can see, you can actually see this because they, 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 on the feed where they don't play the crowd noise, you can hear Antonio Conte, right? Shouting like, <laughs> Arturo! Like, um, just play and stop breaking balls. Except he said something else. Yeah. It was even worse. I mean, <laughs> and then he takes them off at halftime. Dude, you're, you're, you're an experienced player. I know you're on edge and the adrenaline and everything. Enough. There's a point where you hurt the team. But you remember you know. in the Champions League when he got sent off for two yellow cards for moaning twice like in the space of, like you know, of 15 seconds. Look. You can't rely on him. I don't understand why. Listen, uh, Conte, we've been critical of him for believing too much in, in CVs and whatever. If he realizes that Arturo Vidal like this doesn't help his team, and I think he did realize it, and he thinks he can manage him, more power to him. I mean... There's a yeah, point when yeah. you become when you become a real liability to the team. You yeah. know, no matter how cool your mohawk looks and, and how much of a warrior 100%. Conte thinks you are. Another post moment in the Premier League as uh, Burnley v Fulham is off. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's not just Monday. Jules, we've had Kvidiasi from the likes of Lancini, <laughs> Lamela, Milivojevic, Mitrovic, Lo Celso too. Yeah. Okay, if I don't mention yeah, him too. you have to mention him, even if he's your boy. I just don't know what's wrong with those people. They think it's okay to gather together in our same household and have parties and I, dinners. I, I don't. The, the one that I don't get was also the the the, the Argentine parishada, right? That they had yeah. or whatever the hell that was. But which, by the way, you see the picture. They have there with all their friends. Santa Claus is there. Yeah. Shouldn't Santa Claus be gone by now? Well, I thought he would be resting in the North Pole, but you know. But, but it's it, like if I said to you, don't take pictures if you're gonna do it. Right? Yeah, First of all, don't do it. With. Don't do it. But if I said to you and producer Freddie, okay, come to my house for New Year's Eve. We'll have a nice dinner, French yeah, raclette. I'll live stream it. Yeah, but what would you would say? Oh, Jules, come on. That's not, you know, we can't do that. As much as we would love to all be together, we can't. We'll yeah. wait for better times and we do it next year or another time. And I think I it's, even, it's even worse in the case of Mitrovic because, again, you've had an outbreak at yeah. your club. Yeah. It's the same thing as Mandy. People are sick at your club, okay? Yeah. So, you know, just, just, just own up and act like a pro. Crazy. Leipzig stay hot on Bayern's heels in the Bundesliga, beating Reno Matarazzo. Stuttgart one 0 thanks to Danny Olmo. By the way, Matarazzo and and uh, Nagelsmann obviously working together. Offenheim being good friends. It was lovely to see That's them right. and everything. You really like him, Gab, don't you? Who, Matarazzo or Danny Olmo? Uh, both. And <laughs> yeah. Nagelsmann. No, the opportunity three. to sit down with with Reno Matarazzo. Um, it is pretty. His story is pretty. Pretty amazing. Yeah, um, you know, after Bob Bradley, he is only the second American coach to to work in a top five league. And obviously, Stuttgart, despite being newly promoted, are flying. They're doing well, yeah, really. Well. I thought Nagasman did got the best of him. I don't 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 forget the one 0 score line. I thought they were substantially better. Um, I think Danny Olmo's goal is big, and I wonder if it signals 
maybe a bit of a turning of the corner for him because he's such an incredible story. Yeah. Right? A Barcelona kid, goes to Dinamo Zagreb, plays in the Champions League, moves to... Does really well there. Does, does really well, thing, yeah. moves to Leipzig for, for a ton of money. I love the fact that this is somebody who challenged himself at a young age yeah. because I'll tell you what, you know, being in La Masia, you get a certain type of education, a very good education, and you say, you know what, I want to experience something totally different. Yeah. I go to I, I go to Croatia, and now I go to to Leipzig. I mean, talk about CV. He's still a young man. Mm. He hasn't fully harnessed his potential, but he can be a real value added. And I think, he's, for me at least, a big part of the reason why, like you, I have Leipzig as, yeah. as Bundesliga champions. Yeah. Rangers are now 19 points clear at the top in the Scottish Premier League, but... Uh, Jules, you pay more attention to this than I do, so let me ask you, <laughs> is that Jurgen Klopp's successor we're seeing in Steven Gerrard, we, or is that too easy? It's a bit easy, but we, we, it might be because Jurgen has still a few years, so Stevie, I think, can can keep working and improving and learning. Do they play like Liverpool? They, they, they don't, but they don't have the same the, the same players. But well, I think the Klopp didn't have the same players no, he has I now know, when he was at Mainz. Yeah, but still, they it's not the same free-flowing attacking football. In that game, for example, there was only three shots on target. All came from Celtic. And then Rangers won 1-0 on the McGregor own goal. So, But they're, so, they're solid. They're the best defence by far in Europe. They won 20 and, and drawn two in the 22 games this season in the league. They're so well-structured. They're well-disciplined. They've got They've, they've got a lot of energy on the page in the way they play. And, and, and most importantly, I think he's, he's improving players. You know, Ryan Kent is, wow, he's, he's a really good player. All around in that team, he's made such a good job and, and it's great to see them there. And of course, they, they haven't won the league yet, but if they don't now, I mean... That is a big lead. Happen. It's a big lead, even with three games in hand. Napoli destroyed Cagliari 4-1 uh, Piotr Zelinski still is the show, but Gab, no Victor Oziman, who tested positive for COVID after flying to Nigeria to party without a mask. Again, not very clever from our boy. I mean, we love him, but that's disappointing. I, I mean, I don't know what to say because we loved him. What he, you know, we loved him, and then he got hurt, and now he's on his way back, and then he decides, oh, it's my birthday. Let me go home to Nigeria, which of course you're entitled to do. And then video emerges of him yeah. partying, and you know. Yeah. It looked like he had a really good time, but yeah. uh, he's tested positive. Sure. He has apologized, which is what you should do if you contract COVID by putting yourself at risk, mm -hmm. hint, hint, to some of these other people. Um, it's a shame. It's a shame because I think Napoli could really mount a title challenge. Well, are you still sure they're going to win the league? Well, they have a game in hand, okay, right? Okay, okay. So okay, they get those extra see. three points. Yeah, Who knows? Let's see. <laughs> the hype never stops and neither does the hope. Mauricio Pochettino held his first training session for Paris Saint-Germain. Jules, you were there watching the live stream from beginning to end. I loved it. How excited are you? So excited. I'm so excited. I mean, okay. Did he put the cones down correctly? He, yeah, I would have put the cones myself, to be fair. I could have done yeah. anything he wanted. Does he have the do. jumper that says MP? Yeah, he's got everything MP. His son has SP, of course, Sebastian. Um, it's just what, it's good to see him back. And I think there's a lot of us who love him. Uh, are his friends, the, the, the Mati gang, are they all still there too? The, all these assistants from yeah, Spurs yeah, and stuff? Yeah, Jesus Perez and Tony Jimenez and, and, uh, <laughs> and Miguel D'Agostino, Miki, all of them are there. There's, there's a lot of question marks, of course, you know, how the players will respond. Yesterday already, he said that time to them, let's stop laughing, let's stop talking, let's focus, this and that. So I think the discipline will be back for how long, I don't know, how his name are going to respond to that and Kylian Mbappe and all of that. But let's see, for now, he, I'll, I'm loving it. Is it true that he's going to grow his hair long again? And like, he can like just totally a, regress like to what he was, was like? like captain. A, yes. I would love to. Can you How imagine? awesome would that oh, be? My. Now, I tell you what, guys, uh, when you're Pochettino's age, unless you're Willie Nelson, you generally yeah. don't look good with, and or I, a professional wrestler, you don't look good with long hair. And I, I would think that Poch knows that. I so think I think, we, I think we're safe, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bobby Granada, 2 nil, and Brian Hill scores his first two goals. Gab, why is everybody so excited about him on loan from Sevilla, of course? Um, it's weird. You, you get certain players who, he has I saw him a little bit last year, and, you know, you talk to scouts, people do this for a living, and they just, just go, just, just go insane about yeah. him. They're like, oh, Brian here, Brian. These were his first two goals, two really good goals. Um, you know, the, the the joke, somebody said, he's the most talented Sevilla player in the Premier League, in uh, in La Liga, and he doesn't play for them. <laughs> now, that is saying a lot yeah. if that's the case. But look, 
another one for you for, for, for your if you play FIFA maybe or whatever. Oh, football manager. It's obviously yeah. if you haven't heard of him, check him out. He is yes. a bit special. Still very very, very yeah, young. Yeah, of course. And then really not very developed. Yeah, no, very skinny still. Yeah. Um, it's a melancholy farewell to Jerry Marsden, who passed away age 78. Jules, he was the front man of Jerry and the Pacemakers, but football fans around the world know him for one particular song. Now, of course, Gab, is the You Never Walk Alone. That, uh, they sing at Liverpool, of course, but not just in Liverpool, in Dortmund, at Celtic Park. Uh, and maybe the most iconic football song ever, would you say? Probably, Probably. One that's been adopted. And, you know, like a lot of things in England, people think it dates back to like pre-war. No, it's not. It's from the, it's from the 60s, yeah, 60s, basically. Yeah, exactly. Remarkable. But really sad, really sad. Barcelona presidential candidate Emily Russo says that his plan is to persuade Messi to stay and to take a pay cut and surround him with young talent, Kylian Mbappe, Erling Haaland. Uh, does that make sense to you, Gab? And obviously Minghella, the, uh, the agent that brought a few big names to Barcelona in the past, long time ago, would be involved as well. Yeah, I said he's already spoken to Mino Raiola. Uh, look, <laughs> these are elections. These are politicians. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, Emil? If you can go to Messi and say, hey, look, why don't you take a big pay cut and then you can go to Paris Saint-Germain and Borussia Dortmund and Holland and Mbappe and say, hey, guys, come on over, play with Messi. And you can do it while balancing the books. More power to well, you. But but do the, does he expect Messi to pay to pay himself the transfers of Kylian Mbappe and Erling Haaland? I, the club can't pay them, so <laughs> someone else would have to pay them. I don't know, but these are, you know, it sounds like a okay. nice idea. Yeah, I love it. Hey, I know. love it. Free PlayStation 5s for everyone. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.